Hey everyone, welcome to Moving Matt. We do all things cameras with a dash of vlogs and a little bit of travel. And today we have some big news coming out of Canon rumors about the R5C. So if you're unfamiliar with the R5C, essentially it is a Canon R5, but it's a more video centric version of that camera, kind of like the Sony FX3 to the A7S III. And like the FX3, this will also come with active cooling because I'm not really sure if you're aware of this, but the R5 had like a little bit of overheating. Um, most people didn't hear anything about it but it was a little bit of a problem for the r5 especially when it was shooting in 8k so when we first heard about the canon r5c it was coming from canon rumors and they had it as a cr3 which essentially means that they believe this camera to be fact they originally said it was going to be coming out early 2022 but now with the supply chain issues and in this recent rumor they started to kind of walk that part back a little bit which is understandable pretty much everything has gotten delayed at this point they also said back then that of course it was going to have that active cooling but it was going to have slightly different ergonomics but overall the changes in the design and the changes in the specs didn't seem super substantial until right now so let's get into some of this new information that we have because i personally think it is very exciting and i think if you're a video centric person and you were excited about the r5 originally but then all that overheating stuff pretty much overshadowed everything i think this camera may be for you so right away this camera will be coming with canon c log 3 which now the r5 has c log 3 as well so that's not that big of a deal but not just a C log three, it is potentially gonna have C log two as well. Apparently there's some inner debates going on right now on whether they're to add C log two. And it really makes a lot of sense, especially as I go through some of these specs on maybe why they wouldn't wanna add that. So probably the biggest difference between this and the R5C, at least on a superficial level, is this will come with unlimited 8K RAW. And it will do this using Cinema RAW Lite. And they also said it will have unlimited 8K30 and XFAVC and MP4. So it looks like the trend that they added in the Canon R3, which essentially removed the record limits, is coming to this camera as well. And it also means that whatever this active cooling that they have in it, which obviously is gonna be a fan of some sort, but it seems like it's really doing a good job if they're gonna be allowing 8K unlimited. Uh, that just, uh, it kind of blows my mind. Right now we have the Z9 that essentially has pretty much unlimited 8K, but it does so in a very thick and heavy body. So we will see what's the size difference between this and the Z9. Now the Z9 will supposedly have 8K60 in the future firmware updates. And as far as we know, this is gonna be sticking with 8K30. I don't really think that they could change that up without changing the processor that's in the camera. But I mean, 8K30 is really, I mean, it's, it's already a pretty crazy feat that they're able to accomplish here, 8K60. Most of us do not have the hard drive capacity to even deal with those big file sizes. I mean, it's great on paper, but most people aren't gonna actually use it. Now, another big upgrade that this camera will have is it will have time code in and out. So I think right here, we're starting to see the picture of maybe why they're questioning on whether to add C-Log2. I think they're looking at some of their, you know, kind of starter to mid-range cinema cameras and are starting to wonder Will this really start to eat into it? Because essentially time code in and out is going to allow this to be somewhat of a production camera. I think they're really going for kind of like the Panasonic S1H. It is able to be like a Netflix camera. Well, this camera already shoots a DCI 8K. This is pretty much the only step they've been missing to have this camera be Netflix approved. At least as far as I know, maybe you guys know more about a camera being Netflix approved, but it seems like that's what they're going for with this camera. So I know some of you are thinking that this will not have XLR audio, so there will still be a very big reason to have a cinema camera like the C70, but this will have the multi-purpose hot shoe. So the digital hot shoe that you can add different accessories to. And one of those accessories allows you to add XLR inputs. So that's kind of like another check mark that this camera is getting that is starting to kind of make it indistinguishable from like a cinema camera. I mean, I'm not saying like a, a giant cinema camera, but more of a form factor cinema camera. This, it's really starting to shape up to 
kind of be a cinema camera. And another feature that this camera has that makes me wonder if the changes to the body are quite a bit more substantial than what we've been led to believe in the beginning. They say it will have a 3 8 or quarter inch mounting point on the EVF, but it's not gonna be interfering with the digital hot shoe. Now, I'm not exactly sure how that is gonna be working out. I can't really picture that design. Now, I know with the FX3, they had those mounting points as well, but they removed the EVF. So I'm wondering if they're actually gonna remove the EVF on this camera as well. Now, initially with the FX3, I didn't like the idea that they removed the EVF. And one of the reasons I went with the Sony a7S III over the FX3 is it had that EVF. But I do not think that that will be as big of a problem for Canon if they decide not to add that EVF because the LCD screen on the back of the Canon cameras are substantially better than the really crappy LCD screens that are on the Sony cameras, which, I mean, you guys need to fix that. I think everybody's told you that at this point. I'm not gonna go into it. I wanna go into it, I'm not gonna go into it. But I think if Canon does remove the EVF, then it kind of makes sense with what they're talking about with these mounting points. And I don't really think it will be a bad idea in this particular use case. Another big upgrade to this camera is it will have a full-size HDMI port, which is absolutely huge. And I know a lot of people will be very grateful for that. Essentially, the full-size HDMI port will just give a lot more strength there. And unlike the micro or the mini HDMI ports, it's not gonna bend near as easy. Also, it allows you to be more congruent with all the other cameras that you have if you have other cinema cameras. And a lot of people have extra HDMI just cables laying around the house where they don't have to go buy a specialty cable just to use it on one particular camera. So that's gonna be a big plus. I know a lot of people are gonna like that. Now, the last bit of new information that we got is that the LCD screen will not be able to flip inside kind of like it does in the R5 because it's gonna sit back slightly more to make room for that fan. I think you can kind of look at the FX3 and get a little bit of an idea of how the LCD screen is gonna fit on this camera. So essentially, I'm looking at this camera in a couple different ways. I can kind of see this camera being slightly like a stopgap between the R3 and the R1, especially considering that most of the Olympics is going to be shot in 8K, just kind of like the Summer Olympics was shot in 8K. I think that they want like a reliable 8K camera that they can have on the sidelines. And of course, I can see this being great for vloggers and YouTubers and really even some people that would be maybe gravitating towards the C70, I can see them going for this camera instead, especially if they wind up adding the internal NDs to this camera, which we haven't heard anything about that, but if they add internal NDs, then I think this will pretty much be like the perfect little B cinema camera. But that's all for the updates for now. Drop in the comment section below and give me your thoughts on this camera. Do you think kind of like me, that this may cut it too much into the C70 cells? Does this sound like the camera for you? Drop in the comment section below and let me know. And if you've liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And until next time, peace.